Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Rank, where I climb the online series 11 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. Today we're playing a couple of more games with the rank number one Colossal team that finished first in the previous rank season, built and piloted by a player called Jude, aka Colossal VGC, who I've linked down in the description below. Once again, huge congrats to him for reaching number one on the ladder and rental and paste and a team report for a previous edition of the team are all included down in the description below if you want to try out yourself. So yeah, just playing a couple of more matches. We obviously have just a couple of weeks left of series 11 and we'll be then switching to series 12, which we'll be playing for the next couple of months. So I personally haven't tried it out yet, but question of the day, I'm curious if you have and what your early impressions of the format are if you've tried it. So thanks so much as always for watching Road Trank. If you enjoy, please share your support by leaving a like on the video. I'd really appreciate it and let's get started. All right, first match of the day, and it's a Calyrex Ice Rider team. Mimikyu, Clefairy, you're going to see a lot of Calyrex Ice in Series 12. Uh, Mimikyu, Calyrex, I feel like has been a very strong early meta contender for Series 12. So, yeah, nothing too surprising there. And then Torkoal, Charizard, Venusaur. Now, Colossal is very good offensively into my opponent's team, but it obviously has to worry about Max Quake from the Calyrex Ice Rider, as well as Max Quake from Venusaur. And with Clefairy, you can obviously redirect my Aqua Jet from Urshifu away. But don't really love Glarium Moltres here either. Uh, Instant's going to be important, especially with Shookaberry. I almost want to just lead Urshifu and Colossal anyway. And if they go with Clefairy plus Mimikyu, like I could intentionally not knock out Clefairy on turn 1, for example. And then have Incineroar and... <laughs> this is not actually a very good matchup for Zacian if they go with like Charizard Torkoal. Okay, if I were my opponent's shoes, what would I go with? I would actually probably go Mimikyu plus Clefairy lead with Torkoal and Calyrex Ice Rider in the back. Mm. I just don't think this is a very good matchup, honestly. We'll see how we can play around it, but I, I think their Trip Room mode is just very, very powerful. Uh... And I, I think Rillaboom and Galarian Ultras are just like way too weak to Calyrex Ice Rider to really feel comfortable bringing them. So one interesting thing we'll want to do in this matchup is like try to play towards Incineroar. I could have maybe brought the Galarian Ultras as a switch in for Max Quakes from Calyrex Ice Rider and try to like stall out their Dynamax with it, for example. But they're gonna go to Clefairy and Charizard. Okay. Now, a lot of Charizards do run Max Quake, right? So if you're in my opponent's shoes, you could go for just the follow me into Max Quake on Colossal. Don't really have amazing counterplay to that. If I were my opponent, I would like always make the safe way here. I always go for follow me and then just Max Quake into Colossal. So I'm just going to Surging Strikes into Clefairy here, and I think switch Colossal out into Incineroar. Uh, and the goal here is to essentially stall out my opponent's three turns of Gigantamax Charizard. Now, this actually is... I'd rather see this, I think, rather than the um, Trick Room component, like the Mimikyu Clefairy lead with Calyrex and Torkoal in the back. But it's still tricky. Now, Galarian Moltres could have been interesting here just for Snarl, but I feel like we just lose way too much early on. Okay, they max, which is a good start. Now, another thing my opponent could go for is, like, Helping Hand, Airstream, or G-Max Wildfire, even into the Urshifu slot. I, of course, could go for, like, the Aqua Jet Vocalist play, which would punish them for going for anything other than Follow Me here, but I, I just think that we lose potentially way too much from that, um, because, like, the Follow Me here is super obvious, and for that reason, maybe my opponent decides to not go for Follow Me, but, yeah, I, if I were my opponent's choose, I think it's fine to just make the safe play on turn one, because there's not much I can really do to stop it. Interestingly enough, they do go for Max Airstream. Okay. Now, I'm okay with that. Um, the idea here was to basically, like, stall out their Dynamax. And so because we have Focus Sash here, they'll spend two turns to basically pick up a KO. It'll probably be a Wildfire next turn onto uh, the Urshifu and their Life Orb, yeah. So it could have been interesting where if I just go for Surging Strikes and Vocalit, then the next turn I can just Aqua Jet and then just go from there. Uh, but once again, it's hard to make that play with, like, complete confidence, right? Okay, unfortunately I don't think Aqua Jet's going to KO Clefairy here. If I were my opponent, I would just Wildfire Urshifu here. And I can bring in Colossal and Max Guarded on the third turn. 
What do I want to do with Incineroar here is the question. I could Flare Blitz to maybe try to KO Clefairy, but I think Taunting is actually kind of an interesting option here as well. Um, I guess I don't mind going for Surging Strikes because I don't think Aqua Jet damage matters. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually down for a Taunt here to make them force to switch out like the next turn. Okay, Clefairy protects. Yeah, that's fine. That makes sense. It's max Rockfall. Oh, interesting. Uh, this actually means I get the knockout onto the Clefairy. But then Taunt gets redirected out into Charizard. So, they might not have max Quake then if it's Rockfall. Because you would want a Fire and a Flying type attack, obviously. They've already revealed a Flying type attack. And then Rockfall, and then Protect on Life Orb is just by far, like, the strongest option, right? So that would make the most sense to me, and that would make this really interesting, because obviously I can now just bring out my Colossal and then go from there. I'm obviously going to lose the Urshifu, unfortunately. A party shot here would have been amazing for us, because then I would have been able to bring Colossal back in, and then instant out next to it, I could just fake out whatever's next to Charizard and Volk it. And the downside is now I obviously can't go for self-Aqua Jet, right? But Rockfall was definitely not something I was expecting, and I... I feel like if you have Quake, you would just go for Quake there instead. Torkoal switch in here certainly makes some sense. And this is where, like, having Zacian is really awkward. It's just not that good in this matchup. I could have even maybe decided to just not bring it out right. Okay, they bring Mimikyu out. Interesting. Hmm. I mean, this makes me think they straight up just, uh... What does it make me think? It makes me think that they didn't bring Torkoal and their last Pokemon is Calyrex Ice Rider. If that were the case, what I actually want to do here is Max go for Vocalith into Mimikyu and then switch Incineroar out into Zacian. It's a little bit risky. But the thing is here, I expect them to... Trick Room, right? Because you expect Volkleth into the Charizard slot. Also, like, if, if they indeed don't have Max Quake, then you would actually activate my weakness policy here on Colossal. So so I'm hoping they actually set up Trick Room here right now. Uh, because if they do, I actually think we just win the game. Like, if they go for Max Rockfall into Colossal and Trick Room... I guess, like, G-Max Wildfire out into the... Um, uh, Incineroar switch out here also makes a lot of sense. But I actually think I'm okay losing Zacian in this game. I guess it's pretty good against Mimikyu and Calyrex Ice Rider in the endgame, but then Instant would potentially give me Intimidate, although I guess that wouldn't be the case if I just lose Zacian this turn. Yeah, they do go for Wildfire, okay. Now the thing is, if Mimikyu Trick Rooms, like, can my opponent beat Colossal under Trick Room is the question. I think it was questionable to give up Calyrex Ice Rider that way. Um... Or sorry, give up Zashi in that way. Because I could have sacrificed Incineroar. I should have actually just stayed in with Incin, I think, and just gone for the same play here. Uh, and instead just go for a Taunt or a Parting Shot into the Mimikyu slot instead. Because Zashi is obviously really strong against the Mimikyu, Calyrex, Ice Rider endgame. Yeah, they are going to Trick Room. Okay. The good thing is I have multiple turns of Trick Room to work with here. And I have Fake Out this next turn. So what I can do this next turn is pretty easily just go for a Fake Out into the Charizard slot, right? And then I can Flare or Vocalith into the Mimikyu. The reason I want to Flare is so that I can obviously go for, like, change the weather. So yeah, I think it probably would have been better to not give up Zacian um, and just sacrifice the Ensign. Then we'd be in the same spot, but I would just have Zacian in and I can just vocal it Mimikyu, or vocal it Charizard, Behemoth Blade Mimikyu. I think it'd be really hard for my opponent to win. So yeah, I'm going to max Flare here uh, and then go for Fake Out. My other question is how slow is their uh, Calyrex Ice Rider in this game? Do we potentially outspeed them under Trick Room with either of our Pokemon? I don't even know if a Max Thor KO is Mimikyu here, so that's the other uh, important question to ask. This is still definitely winnable. Um, honestly, yeah, I mean, this was a pretty close game. I think, like, the Zacian switching was questionable. In my head, it was more important to have Instant in the back, but the thing is that Instant's so low HP, and so, like, 
it, we don't really have that much value from it, especially if I wasn't going for the knockout onto Charizard. Uh, the reason I wasn't going for the KO onto Charizard was because I didn't want them to get a free switch into Calyrex Ice Rider and then just sh self Shadow Sneak and then just win with Calyrex under Trick Room. Okay, so they're not going to protect either Pokemon. We're going to get the fake out off here. Okay, they actually have for Shadow Sneak, but I don't think that KOs us. Nice, only does 9 damage. And now we get a full powered max. No, not full powered, but just a max flare off into Mimikyu here. Okay, cool. And with the rocks, Mimikyu should faint. Charizard's taking a lot of recoil damage now from both the Sun, Solar Power, as well as the Bulk Lit. So I actually think it faints next turn. Mimikyu faints now, which is obviously good. Now we get the KO into Charizard as well. Now, if you're my opponent with Colossal, what would you do? You can protect the Colossal. Or, sorry, with Calyrex. You could protect Calyrex, right? That's certainly a possibility. Um, I would always protect here, I think. There's three turns of Trick Room left. It's going to probably have high horsepower. Hmm, this turn's a really big deal. Yeah, the question is whether or not they protect or not, because obviously they can uh, potentially get a free attack off with Charizard here. Charizard does faint after Life Orb, Volklet, and uh, Sun damage here, though. I think I am just going to double up on Calyrex here. Actually, I'd rather Blitz Charizard here in, in case um, they do protect Calyrex. They just offer high horsepower. Okay, we just win the game off that. You just activated my weakness pulse and I just pick up a double knockout with that. That is not what I was expecting, but I'll gladly take that. I think if you're going for high horsepower here, you have to target the Incineroar slot so you don't activate my weakness policy immediately. Um, but I think it's probably better for them to just always protect in that position. Let's see if we faint from recoil here. Oh, we don't. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that, I, I, if they don't faint from recoil, then this play is always the right play, right? I think... So, yeah, we managed to pull it off here, even despite not getting Colossal Steam Engine or Weakness Policy off. But I do think in this game, it might have been better to just not give up Zashi in the way I did. Um, we obviously lost it for essentially nothing. That's actually been a pretty interesting trend in my time using this team. Like, I actually often just, like, get zero attacks off with Zashian. But uh, that's the thing, right? Zashian, if you manage to conserve, it can be super strong. But in this matchup, it was a little bit awkward because they had Charizard as well as Torkoal in Team Preview. Mimikyu can set up Trick Room as well, and it is quite good against Mimikyu and Calyrex Ice Rider under Trick Room, but Mimikyu can will wisp us, and then you can also self-shadow sneak into a high horsepower as well. So, yeah. Uh, that game did not play out how I expected it to, but in the end, like, we got what I was looking for, which was mainly stalling out the Charizard's max early on, and then playing towards, like, a Colossal Sweep in the end game. So, uh, I think we would have actually won that game either way because they didn't protect Charizard there, and then Flare Blitz KOs Charizard. So it's like... If you, in that position, high horsepower Incineroar, well, Max Flare plus the Bulkalu damage, I think, just gets the knockout onto Colossal anyway, and then Charizard feigns from Life Orb plus Recoil from the Sun. And I don't think, like, an Ancient Power or whatever Rock-type attack you're going for onto Colossal does it there. If you protect the Calyrex there, Flare Blitz would just finish off the Charizard, and it's uh, 2v1 still. And Colossal maybe gets its Weakness Policy uh, activated, uh, or Calyrex gets its Weakness Policy activated. Uh, but then you take so much damage through Protect and with Volkalith, and then the next turn I have just a Heat Wave or a Flare Blitz to finish you off, and I don't think a Glacial Lance will pick up a KO onto Colossal and Incineroar. It obviously KO Incineroar, but not Colossal, I think, even at plus two. So, yeah, I think in that end game we actually uh, had it basically sealed up, and the good thing for us here is that, yeah, they did set up Trick Room for us, which was what I was looking for, um, and I didn't want to grant them a free switch and in a Calyrex Ice Rider, because if I did, then you can just self-shadow sneak into Weakness Policy, High Horsepower Colossal, and I probably lose from there. So... Uh, the main question in this game is whether or not I should have switched into in, uh, Zashi and I could have just sacrificed Ince and just gone for a taunt. And I, I think looking back, that's that's probably just a smarter play to guarantee that I have a healthy Zashi in this endgame. Um, but yeah, late game Colossal was really good against my opponent's entire team. And this game shows that you don't always need weakness policy and steam engine to necessarily win the match. So yeah, let's look for another one. All right, next one here. And it is Evil Toe with Gastrodon. Okay. Now, generally, I feel like Colossal should do very well here. It is really good into Evil Tall, Celesteela, and we have Max Overgrowth for Gastrodon as well. A couple things to watch out for are just general shenanigans with Grimmsnarl. Trick, for example, uh, Screens is also just generally annoying. But like we also have a Zacian here, so I feel like Zacian and Colossal should just sweep through here. Um, 
Yeah, I don't mind the Rillaboom into Colossal lead here, because I can fake out into, say, the Grimmsnarl and Volcolith. Zacian in the back, and then... All of these Pokemon are actually pretty good for us. Huh. Uh, I actually don't think it's Incineroar, because there's very little to intimidate here. Urshifu's okay for searching strikes in close combat, but I think Galarian Moltres is actually pretty cool because they don't have great flying resists and they're pretty bulky, so Snarl gives us a lot of value. Their team is generally very bulky, which I think scares me a little bit. Um, part of the reason I don't love leading Urshifu plus Cole here is because they could obviously just lead the Gastrodon. That's gotta be Dark Urshifu, right? It doesn't make sense to be running Water Urshifu with the Gastrodon on the team. So I guess if I can deduce it's Dark Urshifu, then it actually might be fine to lead with my Urshifu, because I can just like close combat max overgrow turn one. Actually wouldn't be terrible. And I, I guess the other thing is now I am not necessarily going to get Steam Engine and Weakness Policy off with Colossal, so an interesting route to take. We're going to go with Grimstar or Porygon too. Okay, I actually really don't mind that, because I think turn one I can just fake out Volcolith into Porygon. The idea is to just snipe it off as quickly as possible. Um... And then turn two, I can just Grassy Glide or Woodhammer for a KO from Rillaboom. Now, I guess the one thing to consider is that Porygon can theoretically Dynamax on turn one here. That would actually be a really cool play, but I don't know if that's that scary. Okay. So, yeah, I'm going to just Fake Out into Porygon, go for the Gigantamax, and just go for the Volklith. The reason why I'm valuing Volklith so much here is because my opponent has a lot of Pokemon that aren't exactly great Dynamax options, right? Both Porygon 2 and Grimmsnarl, not known for maxing. Well, actually, I mean, Porygon can be a really good max option, and I think if my opponent maxes here, it actually would be a really strong play, although I have Zacian in the back, so then Zacian can just come in and put in a lot of work. Like, I think we have the matchup in terms of um, how our Pokemon match up against each other here. So that's obviously favorable. Okay, but Porygon Max here would be really cool to see. Okay, they're not going to go for it. So I don't mind that, even if Grimmsnarl is going for something like a trick, it's honestly not the end of the world, and they're just going to light screen, which is fine. I think the key thing here is to deny Porygon from recovering or getting a Trick Room up. And the good thing is that you cannot stop the damage from Volkolith, even with something like light screen. I guess the problem here is I'm actually not sure I pick up a knockout onto it this next turn with Woodhammer and Volkolith. And then they can just recover. Ugh, that actually is somewhat of an issue, I think. Um... Now, I can obviously Grassy Glide first. Uh, yeah, it's actually really close. I don't know if Porygon faints from, like, a Glide into a Volcolith here. Hmm. It'll be close. It'll be really close. Uh... I'm gonna go for it, though, especially because we have the Miracle Seed here. Now, Flare would allow me to set up the Sun for a stronger attack next turn. But I think I'm just going to go for Volcolith here. Uh, like, that that extra 10 base power, I think, honestly makes a big difference here. So, let's see. Oh, uh, it's really close. It is really close. I think Porygon might just hang on with, like, 1 HP. And if that's the case, that is super unfortunate. Because I could have made the same option, but doubled up onto, like, the Grimmsnarl slot instead. Oh. <laughs> that feels bad. That feels really bad. Okay. Um, yep, yeah, that is not desirable. Now, the thing is, because I've got Zacian in the back, I actually still don't even feel that bad about the matchup, but I think losing a turn of Gigantamax with Colossal, like, this could have been a free attack the subsequent turn into anything I wanted, right? Uh, really stings a little bit, but that's okay. Um... The thing in this game is that we can essentially attack around Grimmsnarl the entire time, right? My opponent doesn't have actual, that, like, super good damage here, so I'm just going to Woodhammer here and Flare. I think this should get the knockout on a Porygon, and uh, also set up the Sun for us, so that... Oh, we have Thunder Wave as well. Okay. That should allow Porygon to outspeed us now, so I don't think Woodhammer actually gets the KO now that Reflect is up. Oh, it does. Okay. Cool. Ah, we get fully paralyzed. Okay, that's unfortunate. Um, the reason that's unfortunate is because that would have given us the opportunity to set up the sun, meaning that our heat waves are just so much stronger in the end game. So, 
My opponent did a really good job stalling out Colossal. Now, I would think they have Gastron in the back, but perhaps their plan against this was to just always go Light Screen Trick Room on turn one. So it's like, even if I were to go with Urshifu, and yeah, this is where they have Celesteela, so now setting up the Sun here really punishes me, unfortunately. Okay. I wonder if Gastrodon's even their last one, but I can't, like, is honestly really bad for them in this matchup. I'm curious as to whether or not they even brought that. I'm willing to switch Rillaboom out into the Moltres right now. Actually, uh, if I were my opponent, what would I do? I would Dynamax the Celesteel and probably Airstream into Rillaboom. So actually, this turn, I don't mind a double protect just to scout out for what they want to go for. Yeah. Like, my opponent's team is super bulky, so essentially, in order to win this game, I need to really push the tempo early on, and I unfortunately was not able to do that with one, the poor gun hanging on with just such a sliver of HP, denying me a third max attack. Although, I ended up getting fully paralyzed anyway, so it's not like, you know, we would have had that much value. That We do confirm the uh, Colossal set here as well. Or sorry, the Grimmsnarl set, okay? It is Meteor Beam. Ugh. That's also really scary, because it means that they can Gigantamax that, or Dynamax that, and just go for max rockfall into anything. Okay, so we actually avoid any damage here this turn, so that's kind of nice. It's interesting my opponent's hesitant to Dynamax that Celesteela. Um, I feel like it's a really good max option. Okay. Well, now I know you're not a weakness policy, which is good. If I were my opponent, I would Thunder Wave the Rillaboom here. So I could always switch Rillaboom out right now into Galeria Moltres. That also allows me to reset the terrain. I just don't love the idea of taking a plus one max Airstream or Rockfall into that slot. So I think in this position, I'd rather just go for Grassy Glide onto Grimmsnarl. Uh, and a Heat Wave, I think. I, I think I might get swept by Celesteel, though, especially because they are the Meteor Beam set. If I were my opponent here, I'd max Airstream the Rillaboom. So, I don't know if I can actually make this play safely. Like, Screens in itself was already a problem for us, and then they managed to conserve their Dynamax super, super well. Now, the upside for us is that maybe Galarian Moltres can put in some work thanks to Assault Vest and Snarl, but unfortunately for us, they also are the Meteor Beam set. Okay. We're gonna go for Glide here. It's not gonna get the knockout. Decent damage, but they've gotten so much value out of screens this game. Okay, they're gonna Spirit Break into Colossal. Which makes me think it's an Airstream into Rillaboom. That would make the most sense to me by far. Meaning I could have maybe switched Rillaboom out in this position into Zacian. That would have been a pretty sweet play to make. And that it will get the KO. Yeah, I think Celesteela just snowballs this too quickly now. Um, I don't have super good damage into it. Like, my way of beating it was gonna be Colossal. And I got fully paralyzed, so I wasn't even able to set up the sun, which obviously, you know, is not super good for us. Uh, and then, yeah, us not knocking out Porygon by just the sliver of HP also uh, really hurt us. Uh, my best bet here is to hope that Glaria Moltres hangs on from a Rockfall, I think, because I do have Snarl, obviously, and that gives us pretty good value. Like, this game is still definitely winnable, but it's a lot more difficult now. Yeah, and I don't think I want to bring in Zacian, because if I bring in Zacian, they're just going to Thunder Wave it. I wonder if Woodhammer earlier, the turn that they went for Reflect, could have been a call. Okay, they are dual screens. Um, Yeah, I'm just going to Snarl here. Go for another Heat Wave. I don't know if the full pair honestly matter too much. Okay, we do uh, still have Speed Celesteela, despite them getting an Airstream off, so that's actually a super big deal. Just reducing their damage output and stalling out their Dynamax a little bit more is huge for us. Okay, it's another Spirit Break, that's fine. Might want to consider switching Colossal out, actually, because, actually, they can't hit the Colossal with Celesteela after their max is over, right? Also, if we survive Rockfall here, which I think we will on either, that's a really big deal. Okay, nice. That activates the sun now. You just activated my Berserk as well. There's only one more turn of max on Celesteela's end. We don't get fully paralyzed, and Heatwave does double connect. Doesn't KO Grimmsnarl, but I think Sand might finish it off. Let's see. Okay, guess the knockout. 
Yeah, the thing to note is like with Celesteela, you're gonna be running. Your only way to actually hit Colossal is essentially Meteor Beam. Gastron is their final Pokemon. Hmm. See, this is where if I had to set up the Sun earlier, it would have been really nice because I could just go for like a Solar Beam here. But I can't hit the Gastrodon, which is part of the problem for us right now. Two turns of Light Screen, three turns of Reflect. It's the Reflect that really hurts us here. Um. I mean, I lean towards just going for Air Slash here in a Gastrodon. Actually, if I were my opponent, I would uh, recover with Gastron in this spot. I don't even, I'm not sure an Earth Power, uh, Earth Power KOs us thanks to uh, the Sand. Man, and we miss Air Slash. Oh, I need all the damage I can get. Uh, okay. That also would have given us a flinch chance, but I, I think there's a chance Gastron just went for recover here anyway. Uh, super smart, by the way, to go for Steel Spike to give yourself a defense boost here. I could have switched the Colossal out and reset these drops, but I did not want to just switch it onto an Earth Power uh, and then, like, lose my Zacian. I did do Earth Power. Can we potentially survive here? That would be nice. Okay. Despite the Sand being up, unfortunately, 4x super effective, still not enough. Oh, and it's because they're Life Orb Gastron. That makes sense. Wow. Interesting. Um, Can we win the game? We still definitely can if we crit. But yeah, I think um, I, Thunder Wave from Grimstar wasn't even that surprising, but I just kind of, kind of got caught off guard by it. Colossal was really good in this matchup. They did not bring Evil Toll, which I think was the right decision. Screens was just too much for me to deal with, so maybe Rillaboom's Ocean would have been a better lead. Uh, okay, let's double check the field state. Plus two defense, or plus one defense, plus two special attack, one turn of light screen left. I definitely need a crit right now, right? Um, I might even need two crits in this game. But I'll start for crit play rough on a Gastrodon. Because I think Flash Cannon from there is probably a 2 hit KO here anyway. Yeah, screen support was just too good. And then the Steel Spike to get a defense boost was also really strong. Okay, they did a Flamethrower as well. So, yeah, that makes sense, obviously. So it's 4 attack, Meteor Beam, Celesteela, right? Steel, Fire, Rock, and Flying. So no Protect on Celesteela. Ultimately, what this came down to is uh, Grimstarrow getting up screens. Uh, by leading Rillaboom, actually, I counteracted some of the residual damage from GMAX Volklith, and that hurt me a lot, right? Because the Porygon was able to survive with just the sliver of HP, and that sliver of HP came from um, the recovery, right? So another approach I could have taken in this game was to just knock out Grimstarrow, but I really didn't want Trick Room to go up. And obviously, I didn't bring Urshifu, so I denied myself the potential to go for the Aqua Jet into Policy combo. And I think Colossal has a really good matchup here, but... Um, the early game didn't go as well as I would have liked, and it was a little bit unfortunate Colossal got fully paired the turn I went for Flare, but I don't know if it really would have changed too much in this endgame, to be honest. Um, yeah, the Spirit Breaks onto Colossal was good, and yeah, the idea between- if I were gonna- if I was gonna go with Rillaboom and Colossal, I think maybe I could actually just consider Fake Out Volklift into the Grim Snarl turn 1, just eliminate that from the field. But we also ran into some pretty interesting sets, right? Like Meteor Beam, uh, 4 Attack, Celesteel, as well as Life Orb, Gastrodon. Both of those actually meant that my opponent had a lot more offense than I was uh, initially expecting them to. So, yeah. Uh, I In terms of Pokemon, I don't think I would have brought the Incinera out, and I don't think Urshifu... And Urshifu could have been okay with that, just because I would have at least had a close combat onto the Porygon, but maybe something like Rillaboom and Zashian would have just been better there turn 1, because, like, they didn't really have very much for a fake out into, like, uh, Behemoth Blade or play rough into Grimstarl. Well, I guess you could switch into Celesteela there, so... If I were to replay this, maybe it's Rillaboom Grim, turn 1, fake out Sacred Sword the Porygon, turn 2, like, Woodhammer, Sacred Sword it, and then save Colossal for the end game rather than the early game. But I just wanted to lead Colossal because it put on a lot of pressure against things like Celesteel as well, but they did a very good job kind of counteracting my Dynamax in the early game. So, yeah, really well played, and let's look for one final one. <laughs> Last one here, and we have a direct mirror match. Oh, gosh. Um... Okay. How in the world do we play this? I've never done the mirror here before, so it, that in itself is already really intriguing. Now, I think Urshifu Cole is just the obvious lead. So if I were, if I were my opponent, I wanted to go Urshifu Cole. I mean, how do I counter that? 
Like, I think the best Pokemon by far are just Urshifu, Cole, Rillaboom, Zacian, but I don't know if I want to lock it in that order. I don't love Glary Moltres here, because it's obviously really weak into Zacian and Colossal on the opposing side. Instant's only really good for Zacian and Rillaboom here. So I think it's these four, but what's my best lead option? I obviously have to be worried about them leading with Urshifu and Colossal immediately. I think Rillaboom and Urshifu is a compelling lead, but it might just give up too much pressure, like... Yeah, I don't know. Because with this, I could fake out, like, their Urshifu potentially, and then get a Surging Strikes off with my Urshifu. This actually punishes them leading Urshifu Cole super hard. Okay, I'm kind of down for it. I don't know, I, j I just don't feel confident in leading Urshifu Cole, especially if they just go with Urshifu Colossal as well. It's just kind of a mess on turn one, in my opinion. But... Mirror matches are, like, exact mirror matches like this are always interesting because obviously, like, speed tires are going to be super, uh, like, a super big factor, potentially, but you want to do your best to basically play around any potential speed ties. They're going to go with Urshifu and Incineroar, okay? I don't mind that too much because I have a faster fake out right now. Yeah, I actually think this is not bad for us at all. The question on turn one is, what do I want to do? If you're going with these two, I would assume you have Colossal in the back with, um... Zacian, right? The fact they brought in Cinder to begin with, I actually think is already a really good sign for us because that Pokemon doesn't really do anything and it means you had to give up something, i.e. the Rillaboom. It's pretty free for me to just Surging Strikes turn one. The question here is, do I want to fake out the Incineroar? I could just fake out Urshifu here. But the thing is, Urshifu doesn't even do that much to me right now. The scariest thing you can do is maybe close combat my Urshifu. Fake out Surging Strikes ensures that I knock out Incineroar, granting me a free knockout and denying them a parting shot. And or Flare Blitz. It also eliminates that so that my Zacian can have an easier time in this matchup, so I think I'm down to just double up onto Incin here. Okay, they're not going to protect, they're not going to switch out. Makes sense to me. Interesting, they decided not to go for a fake out there. They actually just CC'd into Rillaboom, okay. Uh, I think a parting shot there or a Flare Blitz certainly makes some sense. Now it makes my fake out look a little bit silly, but I'm still fine with it, right? At the end of the day, I get a knockout. Now your Urshifu is also at minus one defense and special defense. The interesting thing here is if I just went for a Grassy Glide onto Urshifu, they'd already be at one HP, right? Oh, well, not necessarily, I guess, since we did have the attack drop, but I actually don't know how well Rillaboom or how well Urshifu can take a minus one Grassy Seed, Grassy Glide. Or Miracle Seed. Okay, so you can just bring in Colossal right now. Oh, wow. They, they have Galarian Moltres. Okay, so they went with that route. Uh, if I were my opponent, then what would I do here? I would actually max the Moltres, max Airstream into Urshifu, and then just uh, protect with Urshifu. Maybe you max Airstream into Rillaboom. That also makes some sense to me. Uh, Zacian should be your final Pokemon. So they didn't bring Colossal. That's interesting. Okay, I am down for Close Combat and Grassy Glide on Tereshifu to break a Sash. Oh, they're bringing Zacian to give it a speed boost via Max Airstream, I think. That's cool. But the thing is, in doing that, you just gave up your best way to deal with my Colossal, right? I like that play a lot, though, actually. So interesting, they took a very different approach to this game. But I like this a lot. The idea of giving your Zacian a speed boost means now you can outspeed me. Which I think is really clever. Now I'm assuming they're targeting my Urshifu here. So great switch. I could have made a switch there potentially. Didn't know if I love that idea. We'll get okay damage here on a Zacian. Actually pretty decent from Grassy Glide, honestly. If I went for Surging Strikes there, I wonder if it would have been in KO range with another uh, Glide. But I'll take it, right? That is certainly not bad. There's their stream. Into Urshifu, yep. Okay, so now they pressure me with the double KO this next turn, right? You can obviously just airstream into my Urshifu slot. Um, I gotta worry about Sacred Sword potentially from Zacian as well. Okay. 
I don't want to switch out right now because a, a Behemoth Blade into whatever I go into in the back is just super deadly, right? If I were my opponent, I would just Airstream Urshifu here, Behemoth Blade into Rillaboom. I think the way they gave the Zacian a speed boost to get around a speed tie is very, very good. Very smart on their end. Okay. Don't mind Aqua Jetting here. Uh, this one was weird because I never got Steam Engine Weakness Policy activated, and I wonder if, like... Uh, it, it's not like I can protect Urshifu here, but I don't really feel good sacrificing it either, especially because my opponent's just getting, gonna get another speed boost anyway. Okay, they went for Play Rough to cover for a Moltra switch in there, that makes sense. Another max airstream. Now I get a free switch in. Colossal actually makes sense as the switch in, I think. The question is, do I survive a Behemoth Blade into, or a Sacred Sword into a Max Darkness? I would think so, because that Galarian Moltres does not very, uh, have, does not really have much offense on its end. I could also just go into Zacian, right? But then they could just Max Airstream Behemoth Blade me. I'd rather just go uh, apply more offensive pressure with Cole right now. Okay. Two turns of grassy terrain left. I just protected. Uh, I'm thinking here I max flare into Zacian and I switch. I wish I had U-turn right now. I'd always go for U-turn here if I did. Okay, you know what? I'm fine going for max flare here and losing the Zacian potentially. It's so funny. I feel like I've played really poorly with Zacian while using this team because I've essentially just lost it every time I've uh, brought it out. But I'm okay with that. Like, I think we should survive a Behemoth Blade and Max Darkness from Galarian Moltres, right? Mm, another possible play there was actually just to Max Guard with the uh, Colossal, but I think if we get the Knockout here onto the Zacian, we actually just win the game, even if you do a ton of damage in my Cole, because I've just got my Zacian plus Rillaboom in the end game, and that's really powerful against Urshifu plus Galarian Moltres, because Sun will be up, I can just fake out into play rough. Okay, so it is going to be Blade. Now, I would think you target Colossal there, which is why I could have actually potentially max guarded it here. Okay, we should survive max darkness, I think. Oh, and they went for Airstream. Even better. Okay, that should uh, win us the game, I would think. Eh, it's still, still not over. But we just eliminated their biggest offensive threat to us, and I've got Rillaboom, and the way I time terrain works out really well, because now I'll have uh, another five turns of grassy terrain in the end game. But I think their strategy to like use Galarian Moltres and then use it to boost up Zacian's speed so that their Zacian would always outspeed us was, was really smart because this Zacian was a huge pain for me to deal with. So now I've set up the Sun. I'm actually not even sure an Aqua Jet will KO us, right? Which is also pretty nice. And the main thing is I've got my Zacian in the Sun, which means you're not dealing very much damage to me with either of your Pokemon. Now they have foul play with Galarian Moltres, but like that's fine. And we know Galarian Moltres is assault vested here, so I think this next turn I don't mind just doubling up into it. <sighs> I'm just worried about um Air Slash Flinch right now. I think that's their best bet. Last turn of Grassy Train, four tons of sun. So so one thing to consider here is to max guard. But the thing is, they can go for Air Slash Flinch onto Zacian and then close combat onto it as well. So, I, I think here I'm willing to just go for Volcalith and play rough. Uh, I don't want a Behemoth Blade here because I don't think that KOs. I'd rather just take the 10% chance to miss and ensure a knockout onto the um, Glarian Moltres. So, this is really interesting because, like, this is exactly how you play around speed ties for my opponent's end, right? They went with a completely different strategy. We ended up bringing, you know, very different Pokemon. Uh, oh, they actually offer foul play. Okay, I think that always allows us to win the game then, unless we misplay rough. Nice. Yeah, that should be game over. Uh, with the air slash, you know, you have the slight chance of flinching. Not the slight, it's actually pretty good, but I could also miss, which obviously would be a disaster. Okay, yeah, and they went for the double up onto the Zacian here. 
And that's actually a really smart play. That's exactly why I didn't want to protect with Colossal there, because you can imagine if they, if I misplay rough here and I protect Colossal, uh, I actually just instantly lose the game, I think. So the idea here is my play covers for me potentially missing play rough or getting flinched by air slash and ensures that you can only get one thing off, right? Like in this position, you can only knock out one Pokemon at best. The worst case scenario would be air slash flinch into Zacian and then Urshifu also one shots Colossal, but then I get a free switch in a Rillaboom, meaning I can just fake out into Behemoth Blade or play rough under Galarian Moltres. And since I had set up the sun with Colossal earlier, we're in a pretty good position where I don't have to worry as much uh, about, you know, taking damage from surging strikes, forcing them to essentially clip close combat. But I had to say, like, props to my opponent, because I thought I had a really significant Pokemon advantage by bringing the Rillaboom and the um, Colossal, but in the end, they found, like, a really smart position to get their Zacian speed boosted up and put myself in, like, a really weird spot. Interestingly enough today, like, I basically just didn't get the uh, Steam Engine weakness policy off at all. And it's partially because it, all these matchups were, like, a little bit awkward for it, right? So, yeah. Uh, game, game 2 is one in which, like, I, I think we had a, honestly, a pretty significant advantage in terms of offense. But my opponent recognized their win condition and recognized how good late game Celesteela was and did a fantastic job stalling out my Colossal in the early game. So, yeah, I think if I were to replay game 2, it would just be with a Rillaboom Zacian lead. Um and take that approach so yeah but those were certainly a very very fun set of games and this team is really strong i think once again colossal uh right now isn't exactly the easiest team to execute just because colossal itself has a lot of like major weaknesses um but it's a team that really rewards like smart positioning and it is super super good uh and i, I think you know colossal in itself just still has a very favorable matchup into a lot of pokemon in the format and the galeria moltres edition on this team also gives it you know a really good advantage into some things like colossal is typically week two so yeah hope you give this team a try for yourself details are in the description below and yeah thanks so much as always for watching leave a like if you enjoy don't forget to answer the question of the day and i'll see you all soon all right peace